Hi students, welcome to my channel. This video is useful for 8th standard onwards. In this video what we discuss is collision in one dimension. Okay. So what is meant by a collision? First thing we will discuss. It's very simple. In daily life we will play game. No. Suppose two balls you take. Okay, one ball is rest. You throw another ball towards it. What happens? This ball will go and hit another ball and this ball will move. Whatever here, collision happen. This is called collision. Collision means two particles are coming near to each other and they are interacting. Some changes happens. That is the change in velocity of one particle and change in velocity of other particle. Okay. This is simple collision. But in collision, what we observe is one particle is coming and touching both together. But in collision, is it required? They have to be in contact. Need not. Macroscopically, when the size of the objects are much, much bigger compared to atom, it looks they are in contact during the collision. But in fact, no two particles means what I want to say atoms when you're going microscopical scale, when you're going deep into the atoms and molecules, there is always space between one molecule to another molecule. But when you're seeing this, our eye cannot distinguish one atom with another atom. That is why these two particles are coming together and they are in contact. After that, they will separate. So literally what I want to say, when collision happens, it appears they are in contact. In fact, they will not be in contact because of some electrostatic forces between one atom to another atom because of electron, proton, is there no? That. But you assume the macroscopically, when two particles are coming close to each other, they will be in contact after that, they will be separated. So in this situation, collision happen. Normally due to the collision, what happens? Sudden change in the momentum of the particles takes place. Sudden change in momentum happen means what? There must be one force. That force is coming during collision. That collision time is very, very small, order of 0 0.01 second. So this force during the collision, the magnitude is much, much higher. Okay. Now watch forward, you will understand more clearly about the collision. This is class number 85. Collisions in one dimension. First, I will explain what is collision. Collision represents an event during which two particles come close to each other and interact by means of forces. Okay. Now you see one example. One particle M1 moving with velocity u1 along this direction. At the same time, another particle m2 also moving along the same direction with velocity u2. But u1 is greater than u2. It means after some time, m1 will go and meet m2 like this. So here what happened? interaction is taking place. So at this moment they will interact and after that they will be separated. So m1 velocity changed from u1 to v1 and m2 velocity changed from u2 to v2. 
means there is sudden change in velocity of each particle. So change in momentum is there for each particle. The change in momentum is due to some interacting force happen at this place. Okay. So this particles are moving along the same direction in one dimension. So that is why it is called collision in one dimension. Okay. Some more information. Here u1 is greater than u2. So we can tell this is approaching. So m1 approaching m2. Here what happened? m2 velocity is more than m1 velocity or m1 velocity less than m2 velocity that is v1 less than v2. Here what happens they will be separated. So initially they are approaching and they are interacting and they are separating. Okay. Some important points I will tell you. Interaction forces are assumed to be much greater than any external forces present. Because this interacting force exerting that force for a small time. That is why we are using impulse approximation. In the previous video, I discussed you know, what is impulse approximation because this force, interaction force, present only for small time, order of 0 0.01 second. So within that time, there is large change in the momentum. So change in momentum in a small time so that force is much much higher. That is the reason he is telling this interaction forces are much much greater than any external forces present. Okay. Now second topic. Conservation of linear momentum. That is like this. Total momentum of the system before collision equal to total momentum of the system after collision. That is Pi equal to Pf. What is the system here? Two particles of mass m1 and m2. Initially they were moving with velocities u1 and u2. So initial total momentum is m1 u1 plus m2 u2. After collision, their velocities changed to v1 and v2. So the final momentum is m1 v1 plus m2 v2. This is equation 1. Okay. Now we discuss elastic collision. Okay. What is elastic collision? It is uh, one kind of collision actually. Elastic collision, why we are telling? In this elastic collision, momentum conserves and total kinetic energy conserves. Total momentum of the system conserves and total kinetic energy of the system conserves. So in generally, when one particle is coming and hitting another particle, you will listen some sound, no? Okay, something happened. One car is coming and crashing another car. You will listen sound. Means some part of energy is converted into sound. So initial kinetic energy, whatever it is there, before collision. After collision, what happens? Some kinetic energy lost will be there. Generally. Suppose there is no change in kinetic energy during the collision. There is no loss in kinetic energy in the collision. That case, that collision is called 
elastic collision. Okay, so this we will discuss with some mathematical formulas. Okay, watch forward. The third topic elastic collision. A collision in which total momentum of the system conserved and total kinetic energy of the system conserved. Then only it is called elastic collision. It means initial total momentum Pi equal to final total momentum Pf. Similarly, initial total kinetic energy Ki equal to final kinetic energy Kf. Already we have written Pi equal to Pf in equation 1. Okay. So, kinetic energy also we can write. Before collision, the kinetic energy of the system. Here system means two particles M1 and M2. So, initial total kinetic energy of M1 and M2 is of M1 U1 square plus of M2 U2 square equal to this is final kinetic energy of M1 V1 square plus of M2 V2 square. I am calling this is equation 2. Okay. From equation 1 we can write like this m1 into u1 minus v1 equal to m2 into v2 minus u2 this is equation 3 okay similarly from equation 2 we can write like this bring this of m1 v1 square this side so half of cancels both sides so finally it looks like this m1 into u1 square minus v1 square equal to m2 into v2 square minus u2 square. I am calling this is equation 4. Okay. Here divide equation 4 with equation 3. So it looks like this m1 into u1 square minus v1 square divided by m1 into u1 minus v1 equal to m2 into v2 square minus u2 square divided by m1 into v2 minus u2. This is like a square minus b square formula a plus b into a minus b. So u1 plus v1 into u1 minus v1. So it gets cancels. m1 m1 cancels. This is m2. I wrote it wrong. This is m2. So m2 m2 cancels. Okay. Now what left out u1 plus v1 equal to v2 plus u2. So I can write like this. I am bringing u2 this side. u1 minus u2 equal to minus of v1 minus v2. Why I wrote like this? u1 minus u2 is relative velocity of particle 1 with respect to particle 2. I can write it as u12 equal to minus of relative velocity of particle 1 with respect to particle 2 after collision. So relative velocity before collision equal to minus relative velocity after collision. Okay. Now what is the advantage of this equation? So here I am writing like this. V2 equal to U1 plus V1 minus U2. We can substitute this V2 in the equation 1. So you will get V1. Suppose if you know M1, M2, U1, U2. You can find out what is V1. That part we will discuss in the next video. I hope you understood.
Okay students, the most important thing what you have to do is just watching this video is not enough. You write down the notes whatever I have given and practice at least two times. Then only you will get the perfection. The perfection is most important. Okay, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video and share this video and subscribe my channel and tap the bell icon to get the notification for further uploads of my videos. Okay, till next video. Bye bye Tata. Enjoy every moment of your life.